So as promised, I said I'd try and wrap it all together. So I drew in all of our lead placements. Um, this is how you'd see it on the body. And you've got your left, and let me draw on the right, I forgot that. You've got your left and the right side of the body. Okay, so what do we have? Each of those leads, so we've got lead one, lead two, lead three, and so on. Each of those take a snapshot. If your heart conduction, your heart, you've got your left, or your right uh, ventricle, your left ventricle, etc. you got your SA node, it's going to depolarize the atria first. That net depolarization of the atria is going to start up here. You're going to depolarize the top first, then you're going to depolarize the rest. Then finally, you're going to get to your AV node. It's going to slow the conduction. It's going to give that little pause between your atria contracting, which pumps the blood into the ventricle. The ventricle is going to pump the blood to the body. So your conduction is going to come down. It's actually going to depolarize your septum. So your ventricular septum is going to be muscular and it's going to be depolarized. It's going to have a small high left ventricular depolarization. On the EKG tracing, you've got your atria contracting represented by that. You've got a small downward deflection, upward, oops, and then uh, finally your T wave. Okay, so you've got this small little deflection. This is actually going to be your high left septum deflection. It's going to kind of go off in that direction. Um, not the same net movement as your heart. But your atria vector force is going to be this way. Your high left septum is going to, going to depolarize. It's going to go through your Purkinje's. It's going to activate the rest of your uh, muscle. It's going to have a net movement that way. Once you kind of get up to the high points of your ventricle wall, then you're going to have a small uh, deflection kind of off that way again, that gives your other downward slope. So, I guess this lead, this idealized EKG tracing, would typically be off of lead two. Now, why would it be off of lead two? Remember, I said lead two has a negative uh, electrode there, positive electrode there, so we're going to be in this direction. That's pretty much the same net movement as your heart. So, lead two is an excellent picture of your heart. It's going to show your, it's going to be in the same about net direction as your heart vector force. And I say that because if you add up all of these, so if you add up your atria, which has a pretty big arrow, you've got your small, small vector force of your high left septum. You've got all this meat down here, all this muscle that depolarizes in your both left and right ventricle. You're going to have a large vector force. You're going to have a small vector force kind of up here as you get higher up into the ventricle muscle. So if you totaled everything up, if you added all the arrows together, so if you got a big arrow, a big arrow, and two small arrows like that, your net force is going to be pretty much that direction. And that's where we get that 45 degree um, that axis for your heart. So your heart's about at a 45 degree axis. But if you look at each individual component, your P wave is your atrial de your depolarization, it's going this direction. You're going to have a positive. It's going to be this direction. Same as lead two. Remember when they match up, you're going to have a positive deflection. You're going to have a small high wave there, high left septum. It's going in the direction that's not the same. It's actually not within the, uh, within the 45 degree perpendicular line that I keep, kept drawing in previous videos. And for that reason, it's going in an opposite direction. That's going to be the small negative deflection. Then you get down here to the rest of the ventricle, to the meat of the ventricle. It's going in the same direction as lead two. That's where you get that large R wave, the large upward deflection. Then you've got uh, the rest of the ventricle, which isn't as influential. And that's where you get the small negative deflection, because it's not going in the same direction. It's going in a different direction as uh, lead two. Finally, you've got repolarization. Repolarization occurs from the epicardium to the endocardium. And that's why you get the positive deflection. And some variations are, if you get a negative T wave, it, it, uh, it could indicate that you have uh, a heart attack, a myocardial infarction. 
Um, same with a high ST wave, but those are more of the pathologies, and I won't even get into that. Um, just pretend that I didn't even say that. So, um, so for lead two, that's going to be your idealized EKG lead. That's going to give the typical, um, the typical tracing that you would expect. So if you're looking at, let's say, uh, precordial lead one, v, V1. V1 is going to be either anterior to the heart or slightly to the right. Depends on the heart's anatomic location within the body. But let's just I'll arbitrarily say that's going to be lead one. Let's see if I can find a better marker. So if lead one is out there, and we're going to take a look at that high left septum. So we're going to do our P wave. We're going to do our QRS. So if our electrode is there, if our picture, if our photo booth is there, and an object is moving away, so if our vector force is moving away from that photo booth, we're going to have the negative deflection there again. Likewise, if our main vector force is going away from the electrode, we're going to have another negative. And finally, um, depending on, on uh, how these cancel out, we could just uh, not have anything if they cancel out. So we'd have that. And then finally, uh, we'd have repolarization, which could occur in the positive direction or the negative direction. Typically, you would see that, let's see, typically you'd see uh, the QRS complex and the T wave in the same direction, simply because when it depolarizes, you have endocardium to epicardium. When you repolarize, you would think it would be opposite, but no, it's epicardium to endocardium. Uh, so typically, the QRS complex and the T wave are in the same direction. All right. So clinically, if you're given an EKG tracing, what you can do is you can determine the heart rate instantly. So what you do is, oh, keep finding the wrong marker. Okay, so if you're given this, you know that this is just a picture of one heartbeat. But if you're given multiple, you know that that's two heartbeats. What you can do is you can count between the two different beats. A heartbeat is technically considered from the ventricle contraction, so the R waves. The R waves show that the ventricle is contracting. The whole QRS complex shows that the ventricles are contracting.